All right, we've got our 3D scan loaded into Blender. We can see if we scroll out, it's kind of small, and it's also in a funny place. So we're going to also fill the hole in the bottom. We're going to scale it up to something more appropriate, and we're going to return it to the origin, the 000 world origin, and also reset this object's origin. As you can see right now, if I move this up, the gizmo is actually kind of disconnected from the mesh. At least in our perception of it, we would think it should be somewhere close to the object down here, but it's floating up in space. So let's go ahead and position this so we can see the center of this object at the base to match up with the world origin 000. So to do that, I'm going to click over here on my view gizmo, click on the Z, and I'm going to look directly at that Z so I can see the X and the Y. And I'm going to come over here and I can use my gizmo to move it down and rotate it. You can see as I rotate it, that pivot point is where that origin is. And slide it in. Works a little bit more. We can always tune this once it's freed of all this kind of extra stuff. But that's looking better. Let's now look at it from one of the sides. And again, I can use my gizmo to click on one of those sides. I can also hold down the tilde, which is just under the escape key on my keyboard, and select these viewports sort of by name. So we can go left, front, right, back, top. I'm going to look at it from the left. And we can see now that this object needs to go up to be kind of in plane, sitting on the flat floor of our 000, zero, zero origin. So again, we can use the gizmo, but I'm going to get in close here, and the gizmo becomes kind of out of sight. So I'm going to hit G on the keyboard, and then Z, and move it on up. So we're kind of flat on the table there. And now if I orbit around, it's looking pretty stuck to the 000, zero, zero which I'm happy with. So now let's talk about this object's origin, and the 3D cursor, and the world origin. So this object's origin, as we said, is this little point up here. That is where this object kind of everything relates to. So our 3D cursor is this little checkered red and white circle. And I can't zoom into it because it's kind of infinitely specific. It's just a point in space. If I want to move it around, though, let's turn our model back on. I can hold down Shift and right click. And we can see it sticks to our model. If we go underneath and try to click on the bottom here, it's going to actually stick to the nearest face that it, it can kind of find. So we, once we have this selected, we can set that origin to the 3D cursor. And you can see, I'll go back, you can see that gizmo snap back over here. And that point is now over here with the 3D cursor. So what happens now if I move the 3D cursor? Let's hold down Shift and right click. Okay. That origin is still there. It's faint to see, but it's still there. If we click on the object, just to see the gizmo is there. So let's actually return that 3D cursor to the world origin. I'm going to hold down Shift and S and go cursor to world origin. Okay, now let's select the object, right click on it, and set origin to 3D cursor again. Okay, so now if I look at my object, it's behaving a lot more as expected. It's rotating kind of from the center of it. We no longer have that gizmo floating up kind of in an awkward place. It's easy to find near the object. It's also right at the foot of it. We can see even though our object's hollow, the origin is kind of at the center base of it, which is a nice place to put the origin as you're working on models. So the next thing we want to do is clean this up. And right now we're in object mode. We can't really play with any of the vertices or edges or faces of this object. We can move things, we can scale things, we can rotate them. But what we need to do is we need to edit that 3D geometry. So we're going to change our mode from object mode up here in the top left down to edit mode. And you can see, wow, a lot has already changed in our viewport. We've gotten these new tools on the left, but also everything is glowing this bright orange. Let's click away in somewhere in the void over here to deselect. And then we can see just how much information we've got. We've got all these vertices. And right now we are looking at vertex select mode. If we switch that to edge select mode, we can see those points sort of diminish and we can see the edges more clearly. If we go to face select mode, we can see those polygons. If I zoom in, I'll click on one of those and we can see 
those triangles are just being selected. If we go to edge mode and try to select stuff, we're just getting the edges highlighted and selected. If we go to vertice mode, point mode, we can select multiple points and do work. Now, if we select three points, we also get a face. Okay, just like if we select three edges, we also get a face. So what we need to do is we need to delete all of this extra stuff over here. Now, if I select that just with my default marquee, okay, my select box, just gonna click and drag, and you can hit X on the keyboard, and I'm gonna delete the vertices. Notice some stuff is left behind. Now, that's a little odd. It looked like we selected everything. So what's going on? If I go back, Control-Z, and I change some settings up here, I'm gonna go to Toggle X-Ray. We have a shortcut Alt-Z. I click on that. You see now we can kind of see through the mesh. And now I'm gonna to try to click and drag, take as much of this away as possible. And now I'll hit X on the keyboard, delete the vertices. And you can see now everything's gone. So what X-Ray mode allows us to do is look past everything and anything that we have inside of our selection will be grabbed to do whatever we need to with it. So we're starting to clean up our model here show you another way to select things. If we click and hold over here and come down to the select lasso, zoom in, and I'm clicking and dragging and just drawing a shape. If we let go, it'll snap to close that shape and we can hit X to delete. Going back around, X to delete. You can do this in edge mode, face mode, or vertice mode. I'm gonna switch to vertice mode Delete. And now it's gonna be a little bit tricky as we come in here and we try to just find the perfect place to cut this. We've got this sort of flange left. So let's use the viewport as a accuracy tool. I'm gonna switch back to a box select mode and click on one of my major axes, looking at it from the side or the front or the back or the other side. And I'm gonna click and drag, try to take just a horizontal cut. Let's see how that did. Okay, that looks okay. And we've got a little bit of a sharp edge on the front. Let's see if we can take one more layer up. So box select, just trying to take just the bare minimum. And I'll hit delete, vertices. Still got some stragglers. Delete, vertices. Okay, I'm just really trying to cut up. Zoom in, just make sure we're not taking too far. I really want to have this end up with as flat a bottom as possible. And we got some more stragglers. Okay, I'm going to look at it from the other side and just see if we've got, if we're missing anything. Okay, let's turn back to the side and let's see if we can fill this. So I'm gonna change my selection mode to edge select and try to click and drag. Just grab that bottom edge. You can see we've got some extra things riding along. So if we hold down shift and click, we can deselect those edges, those extra parts. What we're ultimately gonna to try to do is turn off x-ray mode actually. So we're gonna to try to take this edge as a guide and fill everything in between it. So this is where the work comes in. We've gotta kind of hunt down all of the extra parts. Okay, so now if we go to face, fill, okay, let's see. Nothing's happening. If we go to face, grid fill. Okay, we're getting an error. So my thinking is that there's something preventing this mesh from cleanly closing. And I think we might have some overlapping geometry somewhere. These 3D scans, maybe that's the culprit. Let's try it again. No, yeah. So I think these scans sometimes have a lot of kind of mess and let's see if we can clean it up. So I'm gonna um, go back to vertice mode. 
select everything. And I'm going to hit F3 and type in merge by distance. And before we click away, we want to look down here and say merge by distance. There's some options. And I want to keep track down here of our vertice count. So what we're going to do now is based on a certain distance away from each other, we're going to merge these, these points. So you can see if I really push this, so anything that's over a certain distance or within a certain distance will merge. We can see we're really simplifying our shape. But it's a little too aggressive. We don't want to take the shape down to such a state. So I'm going to really try to just drag this slider just barely to the right. And if we look at our vertice count, we're going from about 9 million, excuse me, that's 9,000, down 8,000, 4,000, 8,000, 6,000, I think 6,700 looks like the sweet spot. So I'll unclick and then click somewhere else to deselect. Okay, not a lot looks like it's changed, and that's a good thing. Okay, well, we're now going to go back to looking at it from one side. I'm going to turn x-ray mode on. We're going to try to reselect that bottom edge. Okay, it looks like maybe we're missing some stuff. And there it is. So one of our points must have gotten moved up. So I'm going to select that, hold down shift and select that. So I think when things got merged, that one got pulled. And that's okay, that's bound to happen. So now, I'm going to turn x-ray mode off. If I hold down Alt F, we should fill that face successfully. I'll go back and show you the other place we could do that. Face, fill. You can see that hotkey is listed next to it. Face, fill. We're doing this in edit mode. And if I hit tab, go back to object mode, we can see we've got a foot to our mesh now. If we want to clean up some artifacts like this, where this came up, we can click on it in edit mode. We can come find that vertice. And you can use your gizmo if you want, and you can move that down. If we look at it from the side, maybe we can be a little more accurate with it and move it down. And maybe we should move this one up. Okay, let's tab out of edit mode. So now back in object mode with our 3D scan, let's select it. And I actually want to readjust that object origin. So let's go back to the left viewport and move this down until it touches again. We can see that object origin is still down here. So let's select the object, right click, set origin to 3D cursor, and now we're back in the middle. Okay, we still have really small object. So if we go to our scene properties and go to units, you can see that our unit system is in metric and we're scaled one to one. And our length unit right now is set to meters. So if we wanna see how big this object is, if we hit in on the keyboard, click on our object and go to item, you can see that the dimensions currently are 0.3 meters by 0.1 by 0.24. So actually 0.3 meters is about a little over a foot, which this object was. So that's pretty impressive. The infrared scanner brought this in at an actual scale. If we do want to make it bigger, we can change it a couple ways. We can zoom out and try that again. S10. Okay. You can see what also changed here is our scale went to 10 by 10 by 10 of the original. And there that math makes sense, 3.3. We can change that back by typing in numbers to scale it. Okay, when we like the final scale that it's at, let's go ahead and make it that, let's make it five times as big. Let's go ahead and set these dimensions. If I go to my object properties, you can see that there's some things that are sort of temporary. We want to really apply these. So right now we have some rotation in X and Z, as well as this scale multiplier. So I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and then A, not Shift A, Control A, and I'm going to apply all transforms. Okay, what you can see now over here is my scale is reset to 111. You can see both here and here the object properties are reset. So now this object is sort of defined by this scale and these rotations. 
So that's cleaning up the scan. We can talk later about fixing this texture if we really want to make this a complete thing. 